Hey Jason, this is Amit from Camcrest. We just wanted to shoot this video to kind of give you an insight um, and a view of where all the locations and the wiring stuff is. Um, so I'm kind of going to just walk around the apartment and I have a little bullet list here and I'll go through one item at a time. So right now, um, if you want to just pan, this is your living room. Pretty much all your living room wiring has been completed. Um, and we're going to basically start off with your living room TV. So I'm just gonna kind of review this in detail for one TV and then assume this will be for all the other TVs. So basically we're running uh, multiple ethernet, um, HDMI fiber and uh, optical. Um, basically uh, optical is for TV audio return. So if you use any smart TV functions, uh, HDMI fiber is HDMI fiber. And then we have four ethernets basically for IR data and then two extra ones for any type of additional functions. Um, in this scenario, you're going to have your 65 inch TV here um, and then you're going to have the, the uh, Paradigm 3 channel speaker in here, so it'll look like a sound bar. So we did also wire um, speaker wire to this area. Um, if you move back a little bit, you will have two outlets on the front right here, one over here and one over there. This is basically subwoofer locations. Um, I'm doing coax and ethernet, so if you do a smart sub, you have ethernet. Coax is basically single channel RCA. So you have sub placement options on the left and right of the front wall, okay? Um, moving around, um, I did make one decision. Um, I do wanna wire, hardwire all your shades. Um, I don't want to go with the battery, battery logic with the charging and the kind of, you know, the, sometimes they are kind of annoying to program and behave if low voltage issues arise. Um, there'll be no charge to you extra. I just want to make sure I, you know, give you a solid implementation. So all the windows have been um, hardwired. So, you know, I'll point those out as we walk around. So basically, um, we painted all our wires yellow. As you can see, uh, nothing has been sheetrocked yet. So once they start sheetrocking, then they want to poke the wires out of the sheetrock. Um, so here you can see this is a shade wire. Um, this is a four channel wire. So theoretically, I can do two shades, the transparent standard shade and a privacy shade. Um, just to give you an insight, here is a view of the pocket they're building. Um, I don't know if a double sage scenario, excuse me, a scenario will be possible. Um, because of the depth of the pocket. Um, typically a roller is, you know, four to five inches in diameter. And as you can see, uh, you could probably get one roller in there at best. Um, but again, this is something you can discuss. But as far as the wiring is concerned, we're wired for both types. All right, moving on. I have another window, shade wired right here. I have another receptacle here um, for a data plug-in and it can also be a subwoofer if you'd like. This is both uh, coax and ethernet. I have one other shade right here. So um, just back up a little and zoom in over there. So as you can see, this is the rear wall section of the area. Now the problem is I have no ability to flush in speakers here. <coughs> flush, in. Um, flush in speakers here, over there. It's pretty much straight walls, so I have no ability to go in the walls. And then obviously your ceiling is straight flat, you know, cement, so we can't do anything in the ceiling itself. So the only option I have is this pocket for the rear speakers. And as you can see, there's a metal sprinkler pipe in there. So um, we won't have the ability to do the Paradigm speakers because I believe they're four to uh, six inches in depth. Um, so what I would suggest is uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'll throw this on the screen in the video, but basically Kef makes a speaker that's an inch to, to two inches deep and they sell it in a six inch and eight inch diameter. So we should be able to flush a you know rear speaker in this little cavity right here, but it really can't surpass maximum two inches, maybe three inches. I did bring up maybe double sheet rocking this, but it would kind of throw off the geometry of the whole sheet rocking. So, you know, we said that let's try to first sheet rocket standard way, and then we'll cut the hole and see our final depth. But I don't think the paradigm speakers will work. We'll have to use some type of shallow depth uh, rear speakers. Okay. Um, so continuing forward, basically there's another wire for this window for shades. Another wire right here for shades. This is the speaker for the rear on the other side. Is that a wire for speakers right here? 
Another speaker right here. I have an Ethernet flushed in on the wall right here. And I have a motorized shade wire right there. Okay, so this is pretty much the kitchen scenario. No, no, sir. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and then again your shade over here. And I just want to be clear, um, in our plan we're calling for ceiling speakers. Um, this ceiling is not, um, according to what these guys are doing, they're just going to finish it so we can't really embed any wiring in the ceiling. Um, so the way I've wired it is basically for in-wall speakers and I put it in this cavity. Um, your designers were mentioning that they may drop the ceiling because you may want it to do overhead lighting. I'm not sure on that conversation, but if that is the case, um, if you do drop the ceiling, we can simply just jump into that drop and then you can do your ceiling speakers. So I ran the wiring to this side pretty much for all the bedrooms. And then depending on what the final aspect happens, um, we can jump accordingly. Um, <clears throat> then again, you have your TV here. And one other point to note, um, this is a note for the designers. Um, they still haven't done the electrical for all the TVs. So if you could kindly reach out to them and coordinate that. And they also need to put plywood backing um, on all the TV areas where we're mounting. Um, so this way, you know, when we mount the TV, we'll go straight into plywood. <clears throat> master bath. I have a speaker here, shade here. This is the master bedroom. So I'm assuming your bed is going to go here facing that way. So basically I did a left and right and I ran two ethernets so you can do data or uh, tell. So I have one side here, one side here. This was supposed to be a window. I was calling it out as a shade, but they closed this up. So I kind of didn't run anything here. I have a low voltage plug in right here. Shade wire here, shade wire there. And now again, this is like your, the same scenario in your living room for the rear speakers. Again, if I was to put speakers in this bedroom, if you do the ceiling, then obviously I'll have the ceiling cavity and really this right here. If you just, uh, can you point up here? So again, you have that same sprinkler pipe issue um, going here. So you would probably need to do the same style setup. Uh, maybe you can do a you know, smaller speaker below because you see the pipe, there is some gap here, but it would be similar to that setup. So one speaker here, one speaker there. I have your TV right here. I have a, a low voltage sub connection right here. And then I have another low voltage connection right here. So pretty much uh, this is the layout of the entire house. Um, the most important thing is to kind of go through all the locations, anything we've missed, um, just do let us know. And then obviously positioning of everything, if it's adequate, um, just do let us know. Um, pretty much that's the update. Next steps will be these guys are going to insulate and sheetrock. Once they sheetrock, um, if you notice, we painted all our wires orange. So they'll you know pop out the wires accordingly. Then we'll come back, make sure our wires are popped in the right locations, terminate the wires. And from a risk standpoint, um, you know when they put the sheetrock, they're screwing holes into the wall. So really, if any damage is to be done to our wires, it'll happen during that time. So we'll basically crimp, test, label all our wires, and if we need to rerun anything during that time after testing, we'll know. But pretty much at that point, once sheetrock is done, wire will be terminated, and then that's where we'll kind of hold off till construction is done with flooring, stuff like that, and that's when we'll actually start the, the implementation. Um, if there's anything else you need, let me know, and this is kind of the first video for your wiring. Thank you.